Now, uh, so that was proximity. Uh, and the trick about proximity is, it, it, as I said, it also allows you to store structure. And structure is useful because sometimes your documents are not flat chunks of text. Uh, up until now, we sort of assumed that the document is just a chunk of text. Uh, usually, the documents that you deal with, they have even a little bit of structure. So they'll have things like titles, authors, maybe date fields. Uh, uh, they'll have some sort of a sectioning structure. So maybe you have chapters and then sections within chapters and subsections and then paragraphs, units. Um, and then on top of that, you often have all sorts of annotations. Right? So, um, somebody could have run an identity tagger for you, right? So maybe on top of this text, you have some tags that say that this is a name or this is a company name, right? Maybe somebody ran a part of speech tagger, so you know that this is a noun and this is a verb. Is it useful? Well, that's a good question. It might be useful for something. So the question is, how do you, how do you embed it in your index? <clears throat> um, I guess you could have hyperlinks, you could have translated text, so maybe you want to store uh, English and uh, Japanese translations of that English simultaneously in the index. Uh, so how do you deal with structure? Well, the cheap way is you can do it the way SQL or relational databases do it, which is to create a separate field for each one of those, um, uh, so a separate field or a separate index for each one of those uh, structural elements. Uh, that doesn't really work so well because you're effectively fracturing your space and now you need to do lookup in multiple indices. <clears throat> uh, what else you could do? You could push the structure into index values. So what do I mean by that? That means that if you have an author, William Shakespeare, uh, instead of, to uh, and so if you have William Shakespeare and it's marked up as an author, Instead of having a token William and a token Shakespeare, you introduce a token uh, author William, author Shakespeare, right, as a single term. So that's one way to push structure into, um, into the values themselves. And then if you did that, you wouldn't actually need uh, a special event index of any kind. Uh, that's very inflexible, though. Um, the right way to do it is to use an extent index, which is a generalization of a positional index, which we covered on the previous slide, right? So what's an extent index? Uh, the idea of an extent index is you're going to introduce a special new term for each structural element that you want to index. So if you have the author field, I'm going to introduce the author um, term or the title term right? or, the, or the named entity term into my um, index and then treat it just like every other word. The only thing that's going to be different is this word will overlay on top of some other words. So we will have a position in the document where there are two terms simultaneously. But that's not a problem when you're doing the matching in indexing. So here's an example. Suppose I want to index hyperlinks, right? So uh, my documents are HTML pages, and in document three, the thing is actually a hyperlink that points somewhere. And in document four, the ink, and in document five, pink ink points somewhere. All of those are hyperlinks. So how do I index that? I introduce a special term called hyperlink. And I can call it whatever you want. Uh, and that term will have a positional index, just like every other term, but with one difference. Each term normally only occurs in a single position. right? So the word thing occurs in position two in document number three. An extent index allows a span, right? So it has a beginning position and an ending position. What this means is my special word or my special term, link, occurs in document three and spans positions one through two, right? In document three, positions one through two are uh, a link. In document four, one through two. In document five, seven through eight. Right? So now I have these uh, made up terms that sit in your index next to all of your normal words that are in the index and they occupy the same positions as the other words in your index. So uh, in document three, in position two, you now have the word thing and you have the word link simultaneously. And that's what you want because this allows you to determine that the word thing occurs inside a hyperlink. So. Um, so here's an example. So if I want a hyperlink that has the word ink inside it, here's what you would do. You pull up an inverted index for the word ink. You pull up an inverted 
uh, index for the word link. Both of them are positional indices, and then I start doing my linear merge. Put my pointers, look, do the documents match? Uh, yes, they do. Now, does the position of the word ink fall inside the span of the word link? And in this case, no, it doesn't, because eight is not inside one, two. So I increment the smaller one, goes to here, three is smaller than four, increment this one. Now, they're in the same document, and position two for the word ink falls inside the span one through two of the word link. So now I have a match, right? Great. Um, so I would have two matches for that, one in document four in position two, another one in document five in position uh, eight. So uh, now what you have is you have a mechanism to index structure in the documents, whatever kind of structure you may want to uh, index. Great. So. Um, so those, those are the three basic types of indices. Again, you have normal uh, inverted indices, you have positional indices, which allow you to do phrases and near operators, and extent indices allow you to introduce structure into your database.